This is Jordan Tao with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Well, uh, Blue Da Vinci says a lot in his latest interview. Uh, shout out to Al Prophet for doing the interview. But um, <clears throat> in his latest interview, he really kind of highlights that Big Meech was working with a third party snitch. He claims that the person he does business with for BMF, a woman, was undercover. I mean, there are CI papers on that, you know, the confidential informant papers. But here's the thing, man. All that aside, he does a lot of talking about Jeezy. We've talked about this. Jeezy setting up BMF Entertainment and everything. That was your job. And the reason why he wanted to do that is to boost his rap career. Uh, back then, especially, uh, you the, the more street you were, the more believable you were. The more money around you, the more people were gravitating towards you. And a lot of people gravitated, gravitated towards Blue Da Vinci, BMF, when they were on the DVDs. This also brought a lot of visuals, pictures, and everything of uh, Big Meech and members of the Black Mafia family. Most of them weren't down with it. So, first of all, this only worked if you were a good rapper. So, obviously, this worked out for Jeezy because he's an incredible rapper. Okay? He is. He's an incredible street rapper. Believable. Goes, his voice is good with the beats. He has good lyrics. It's, it's still, you know, one of my favorite rappers, right? Um, and, uh, you know, that has nothing to do with how I feel about the situation. Blue Da Vinci was average. He was cool. He had, he, he had a good ear for beats. I'll give him that. And um, he did do a good job of setting up or branding BMF with the tools that they provided. Who provided the cars? Who provided the chains? Who provided the houses? Who provided all the promotion? The DJs playing the song. All this stuff costs money. Newspaper ads, magazine ads, billboards, uh, the clubs with money everywhere. This made your, the movement believable. It took money that j -Bo, Big Meech, all these guys were making. Even Dexter Sosa, the driver. These are the people that were bringing in the money. Blue Da Vinci was the artist, but he has some nerve to say, I set all this up and all that. The only reason you money with money, you can make noise. <laughs> I can, If I had a million dollars right now, I could make a lot of noise with billboards, YouTube ads, everything. I think these fake um, mentors on YouTube have proven that. Flooding people with ads and bombarding them with be, having to see their content because they put it in front of you with ads and everything, you make noise. And they did make noise, and it was easy for them to make noise because once you saw it, you were like, oh, I want to know more about this. These guys have a lot of money, you know? People were around Blue Da Vinci because of BMF, <laughs> the, the drug business, the business that had a lot of money. Not because they had, he was an incredible rapper and he did a great job branding. It just cost money. Okay? Yeah, you know, he got the logo together. He did that. He did everything. But I think he he's mad because he's not the star of everything. People always gravitate towards Meech, J-Bo, the key guys that were in it. Blue Da Vinci was the face of the rap label. And I think it really bothers him that Jeezy was the one that benefited from it and not him. And, you know... There's a million ways to argue that. Yeah, Blue Da Vinci knew that he was good and brought him into studio and um, had these visions of signing him, but most people wouldn't have signed around that time. It was too much heat, you know? And once the heat came on, you know, with the, the wolf thing, of course Jeezy was going to um, do his own thing and with with big meech's blessing big meech didn't want to uh hinder anybody's career blue da vinci was already too deep in he started the whole label you know his purpose was to set up the label and they were probably hoping to money launder through it without blue da vinci really no blue da vinci really had dreams of this label working being a big artist that was his dream big meech's and everybody else's dream was like let's launder this money and then he's like yo i got j Bo in front of the camera and big meech and i i made that happen for them no, you didn't, bro. Bro, you, you did the raw report, and people wanted to point the camera at them and get them on camera. 
That's why they, because they're the real shakers and movers. I just don't get why he's so delusional about this. It's not that, it's not that deep. But he has a real, I, I can understand him defending himself on the snitch thing, okay? Because people keep highlighting him, but the bigger snitches are obviously Doc, O-Dog. Uh, you could even say Southwest T's wife. Uh, it's not her. I'm talking about um, her husband, her ex-husband, who had a jealousy towards Southwest T because, you know, basically his wife was taken by Southwest T. Essentially, I mean, that's how anyone's going to look at it. Even if four years passed in between, it still looks like, hey, this guy took my wife, you know? Um, so he has a chip on his shoulder and he t he tipped off the DEA and a bunch of other stuff happened, obviously, you know? Um, but once bodies started dropping, they, they, they put the... <laughs> You could arguably say the music stuff backfired because, you know, you're deep into the music business now with, you know, with relationships. And now Wolf gets killed while you're at the club promoting, but also having fun. But, you know, it just puts more of a spotlight on everything. Who knows? Anyways, um, yeah, Blue Da Vinci's kind of wowing about this stuff and. Uh, I don't think it'll end for a while. I think he's going to keep doing a lot of interviews. He's doing interviews with anybody to do it. And, you know, I don't hate Blue Da Vinci. I just don't like the... It's just like his stories aren't adding up with everybody else's stories and timelines, you know? And a lot of people, everybody's doing interviews. I saw a girl named Brandy Davis doing interviews. The other day. Is that her name? Brandy Davis or something? Let me see. Brandy... Davis. I think that's her. Something like that. She was Brandy something, DM BMF. Brandy Davis, BMF. Is that her? Yep, Brandy Davis, BMF. She's telling her story when she was just dating Magic, you know, and, and this guy was from like St. Louis or something, I guess, and he ended up passing um, in jail. And then she continued to try to get into the drug game. Like, she's been, um, she was in this uh, drug thing before him. She kind of fell back while he took over with BMF. She got with somebody that was a mover and shaker. And then after that, she went in more. When you just saw the guy you were married to do 20, you know, get 20 years and then die in, in prison, right? And then you get with another guy that does this and still do it. And, and then she got what? She, she lost a good five years of her life in, in, to prison. It's great. You can't make this up, bro. Like, this stuff is crazy. Anyways, this is Jordan Tao with JT News. I'll check you guys later. Peace.